Yeah, like this was also the thing is like this this is the guy they said they arrested that was Diddy. I don't know if you can tell, but that's definitely not Diddy. Dude, Diddy got titty. The Diddler those, is those, what people are calling him. Those are Diddy titties, is what those are. <laughs> those are real titties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, there's Okay. Like that, like, but also look at the man's forehead. That's not Diddy. Yeah. Bro, Diddy Diddy. Why did he get arrested though? I I, I don't I don't know. Maybe he did. He put him out as a ploy, like a like a stunt double. He he got arrested. There's no way he got arrested for being Diddy because Diddy's in Miami and nobody's arresting him. This is the Diddler. This yeah. is did not. Yeah. This this is Fitty <laughs> or unfitty. That's Liddy. Unfitty. Hilarious. He's very. Yeah. Okay. Hey everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. Um, guys, I want to thank you for, very much for joining us today. Thank you. Last week was our most listened to slash viewed uh, episode. Um, and so thank you to all the oldies and the newbies. Uh, thank you so much to the people. Where were we last week? <sighs> Cincinnati. Cincinnati. <laughs> Fuck. Thank you to the people in Cincinnati who came out to the shows, guys. I remember where I'm going, but I once don't I've know been where, there, I forget. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I know where I'm going. I don't know where I've been. So, by the way, it sounds like a really deep quote, but it's not. We it's, just That's it. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it should be a deep quote, but for you and I, it's just... But it's also a White Snake song. I don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where oh, I've been. It totally is a it's White Snake. It's the opposite. Ain't hey, no problems. Here's all the songs of yesterday. That it's, one, right? Yeah, it's the opposite. It, ours is... Well, I know where I'm going, but I don't know where I've been. <laughs> Isn't that like the, one of the most iconic White Snake videos ever? Or is like that's the, like the White Snake video? Yeah, yeah that's like the White Tawny Snake. Tawny where she's on, on the, the car, ah! all white, and the wind. Yeah, yeah. She ended so, up marrying oh. Mike Finley, who was a pitcher for the Angels. And oh, she used to punch him in the face, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> it, it, insert law and order sound. Dun, dun. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who came out in Cincinnati. Amazing shows. There is something I want to talk to about, talk about, about one of the shows in Cincinnati. So I want to get into that. Thank you to our friends at Bird Brain. I want to say this to the people. If you're listening and you have kids uh, or you're an aunt or you're an uncle, you know, dude, Bird Brain Apparel, and, and this is not a sponsor. These are just young dudes that I really like their hustle and love their gear. But if you have kids, they're going to love this gear. Bird Brain Apparel. It's amazing. We go in there every time we're there. Yeah. I picked up a dope ass hoodie. Super excited. We got some shoes too. You got a pair. I'm wearing my new pair right now and I fucking spilled coffee on them this morning. Dude, I was walking to go get sugar to put in my coffee and I just feel something dripping down my leg. First of all, out of context, Yucky. scary. Second of all, so we're getting here. First of all, shout out Bird Brain for hooking, helping the hookup. But bro, I spilled coffee on the tongue, the white tongue, the only white part of the fucking shoe. Mm. Pretty upset about that. Yeah, I don't blame you. But I mean, you know, like my mom was like, oh, you got to get it out, like get a Tide stick. And I was like, but I wear my shoes. That's kind of the point is like, I would Tide stick. I want to Tide stick it. This is my second wear on the shoes. I'm gonna um, but yeah, we had a great time and we had a great time in, uh, 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 hanging out, um, and we're in Springfield, Missouri this week, and we're at the Gramercy for one show in New York City. Guys, come on out. Going to be a ton of fun. Um, but I want to talk to you, dude. About And by the way, this podcast brought to you by Best Day Brewing. If you guys like beer and you like the taste of beer, uh, but you don't want to get drunk, this is the beer for you because there's no alcohol in this beer. Yep. But good Lord, it tastes good. And you know what noise it makes when you open it? I feel like you make that sound different every time. I might, but I love cracking open a can. I love sitting in the green room with you and drinking a beer, even though I don't drink anymore. So I can sit there and pretend like we are cracking one open together. Uh, but best day brewing guys, if you like the taste of beer and you like the taste of good beer, but you're not a drinker anymore, this is the joint for you. Here we go. I want to talk to you about quiet on the set. Okay. Okay. You haven't seen it. I have not watched it all the way through. My girlfriend, Iman has. But I've seen the clips online, and and so I'm I'm pretty filled in with well pause, um, <laughs> I'm I'm up to date yeah with with the accusations. I watched it with your mom, 
And um, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, there's four episodes. Unfortunately, we we don't know how technology works. And we watched the fourth episode first. Hilarious. I was like, is that it? It's just one show. And then we look back. I'm like, nah, that's why we didn't know who any of these people were. We spoiled the <laughs> ending for you. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but we went back and watched it. Yo, dude. I was taken aback for so, on, on so many levels. One, I mean, oh, where do I even fucking start? Yeah. But let's start here. Let's start with parents. Okay. Uh, this is to me, look, there's predators. You're going to have predators. Mm -hmm. But this to me is where the issue is. As a parent, there's no way that my kid is ever in a situation where they're alone with somebody ever. Uh, dude, do you remember when I, when we did obviously remember the Josh Wolf show? Yeah. And there was a PA on that show. Not yeah, One of the PAs that I had to talk to in my office and I may, I had somebody else come in and sit down. I'm like, well, there's no way I'm going to be, I'm alone with this person. This is not okay. You're a smart guy, right? But if I'm, dude, when Caitlin was on the set and she was on the set of Mind of a Married Man, there was not, and I wasn't hovering and telling Bob Saget how to direct or Mike Binder how to write his show, but I was right fucking there. Mm -hmm. There was no, not going to, even with the, uh, 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 if there was the class, right? And it was like six kids and a teacher. Okay. There was never a time. Even in the fucking wardrobe, even in makeup, there was never a time when she was going to be out of my eyesight yeah. around grownups. Absolutely. So I, 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 and, and I understand, you know, there was that one woman whose daughter's name was Brandy and she, she was broken up because she, you know, she allowed, she, this grown up on set emailed her daughter a video of him masturbating. Be, because she allowed for this adult child relationship. Yeah. And, 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 and to hear her agonize over it. And I get it, dude. I fucking get it. You're lured in by the glitz, by the money. Mm -hmm. A lot of times these kids are providing the income for the family. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to fuck that up. And I could see it on her face, dude, just broken up. And she didn't go to the cops. Yo, even if you don't go to the cops, she didn't tell other parents. That's the thing. Fucking fuck. Like, like, this I, is, I, I don't get it. I'm not even a parent. Yeah. Okay. But for me, as a parent who un made the unfortunate mistake of allowing that relationship, why would I not tell everybody else to prevent the same thing from happening yeah, yeah, or yeah. letting it go any further as far as it fucking did? Yeah. If you didn't look out for your kid and you feel bad about that and that's your fault and you take the blame for it, why are you not telling other parents to know what to look out for? Because they're going to come in green just like you and your daughter did X amount of years ago. Now, with that much wisdom and whatever under your belt, why are you not spreading it? You're like, it's not like, it's not like a generational curse, but like you could have ended generational trauma for a bunch of fucking people. Had you just spread the word between the parents and helped everybody be a little more head on a swivel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. People had the opportunity to, to, to get the word out there, but they were scared because they would think it might ruin their kid's career, which is the fucked up thing about it though. Do you know what I mean? Like. Hollywood in general, dude. The the w here's the thing, man. Here's the beautiful stuff about Hollywood. Yo, dude, create. Cre I love creative people. I love the energy. I love creative people. And when you get in a good creative situation, for me, there's nothing better. Mm. The problem is, is that it it also is a town that where that makes people desperate because you don't think or know if you'll ever get hired again, mm -hmm. that, that, that does not encourage people to speak up when they're uncomfortable mm -mm. or when something bad is happening to them yeah. because they don't, again, this is a gig. This is not like I just signed a 10 year contract or, 
I'm working as an accountant right. or it's not a solidified like nine to five. This is it's I don't one of the most get, it's a huge volatile business. Like your job's always in the air. You don't want to get the reputation of being difficult. Dude, I told you that time. I almost, dude, I almost for real died on a set because I was nervous to ask a Amber. safety question. Yes. On my name is Earl in yeah. the casket. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, so so like I I get it. Um, but but when it comes to kids, uh, first of all, I think the business is terrible for kids anyways. I've I, I always told you guys this when Caitlin would ask me, and guys, the reason I let her audition is because she was so persistent. I wanted her to feel that no and be like, this is not what we want to do. And that's not what And happened. then she booked. Yeah. In the so room. That was a fucking bummer. <laughs> yeah. But she was like, hey, dad. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a straight like, yeah, oh yeah, what, what did you say I couldn't do? I yeah, never let her kid. audition again. No, because you knew she yeah. would be she was good at. She, of course she was. And there yeah. but also you knew you knew that side. Not that kind of side, but like you knew like we Yo, I mean dude. shit, we've seen what happens to childhood actors. You you there it's uh, there's so many pitfalls in my mind. One, you're on a set with grown-ups who say yes to everything you want. So the there's, there's that. Oh, dude, it turns you into an asshole. Because then you bring that same thing back home. It turns you into an asshole. Not yeah. just home, anywhere yeah. in your life as yeah. a child. And then when it gets the reason, there's so many child actors who, who are fucked up, dude, is be, not only because of whatever terrible things might have happened to them on set, but it doesn't last forever. And you, as a kid, you are not prepared, again, to be on top of the world. I'm on a TV show. All these people my age know me and like me. And then four years later, you're not on a show. Nobody knows who you are. You're just some dude. Yeah. And you're 14. Yeah. And you're awkward. Mm -hmm. And then you get, the, do you know what I mean? You're yeah. searching to fill that hole. And so, like, I think it's a dangerous precedent. And I, I find, I think if your kid wants to get into acting, yo, just what I told Kate, you like acting or you like to be on TV? Because if you like to be on TV, this is not. I do not support that. No. But if you like acting, let's get you in a play. And she never wanted to be in a play. She wanted to be on TV. She wanted to be on TV. That's the lure of the fame and the money. That is not the right reason to get into that business. It's blinding that light, and it's like of you're. You get that first. You get that first audition. She was one for one. Went straight into it. It's like you're drunk with that feeling. Like you're so intoxicated with being like. Oh, I'm in front of cameras. People are going to know who I am. And I can only go up from here. Like that power is intoxicating. You also are looking at, when, when you are looking at other people in the business, you're looking at the best parts. Yeah. The nice cars, the houses, the red carpet, all that being on in a movie. All yeah. that. But there is a lot of shit that comes with it that you, especially as a young person, are not emotionally or mentally prepared for. You're not emotionally, especially now, emotionally or mentally prepared for the world of shit that is the internet. Yeah, the shit you're going to get online for just... About the way you look. About the way you act or just being yeah. you. Like, people will find anything that they can to to t try and destroy others when they feel like it's not deserved. I was, Which is so dumb, by the dumb. way, because it's like, hey, yo, keyboard warrior, go fucking do something else. You're mad that someone else is succeeding at your goal because you gave up or you didn't have the drive to go do what they wanted to do. So get your ass up and go do something else. But like keyboard warriors, dude, fuck off. Y'all do is, nothing for this fucking society except create this dumb stigma that, look, the internet could be a good place. It could have been a good place, but it's not because there are people who are not happy with who they are and see people living their dream and decide to go attack them at any little flaw that they can find. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I will tell you that I think, yeah. So I watched this quite on the set and it was so disturbing how, how blind, not blinded, but how easily successful people kind of float through problems. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How they kind of float through the problems because they're making everybody money. Yeah. Including the people that they're bad to. Yeah. Including those people who, all, if you would ask them, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, they want to keep their fucking job. Yeah. It's a really f terrible spot, dude, and to, to watch that dude, Drake. Well. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You could that what he went through. He it, it was yeah. broken. He was broken. Absolutely. But that I, okay. Also, so did they explain? Because I I don't know if I know this. I mean, I know not how Drake was raised, but before he started sleeping at that producer's house and living with him, was he raised in a good family? Did they explain that? Like, did they say anything about like his childhood or his parents or any some sort of anything like that? Yeah, but I forget. I'm blurring his parents with Amanda's parents. Matt, what did they say about his parents? Um, his parents got divorced and his dad was very much involved. That's right. And his dad actually clocked the producer who was preying on his kid and didn't want him to, you know, hang out with them. And then he got uh, accused of homophobia. And so like he had to step back and, and Drake and his mother kind of got together and, and were like, this guy's cool. Um, screw our dad. Like, you know, we're not going to listen to him. Yeah. And, uh, but the dad had him pegged from day one and nobody, nobody believed nobody him. Nobody believed him. No shit. Okay. So then this, th this goes in to say like, this will go straight into what I'm going to say as the mother of your child, as a mother, you birth this human being, you would do anything for the better of your son, of your kid. How is it fucking possible that you let your then, what, 13-year-old kid Dude, it's just sleep like on a TV producer's couch without you there in a different state? Dude. How does that happen from a parental standpoint? Dude, dude, don't, don't, don't. It's just like the Michael Jackson thing. Yo, if I took away his name, Michael Jackson, and I just said there's a dude at the end of the block who built an amusement park and a zoo. And he's inviting kids over to sleep over and sleep behind two locked doors. You'd be like, let's go lynch that motherfucker. But that's what, but this is what I'm saying. It's the lure. It's the, it's the, I'm sure the producer, like, it'll be good for his career. All that shit, dude. But there are no grown people. You will never, and if somebody's like, no, I know a dude. No, you don't. Fuck, no, you don't. You think you do, but there are no grown people who are trying to get 13-year-olds to stay at their house. Thank Zero you. Grown people. And I, it, it, listen, <sighs> even if you're like, no, dude, I know a guy. But yeah, you know a guy who you likes know, to fuck kids. Yeah, you know a pedophile, yeah, actually. You know. Yeah. No, I, 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 I buy into it. I, that, but I, I just don't understand. Like, so if that's the case, then then his mother did it willingly knowing what was going to happen is no, what you're saying? Like no, that's because I think some people, they go, yeah, I, I would, it goes back to everything else. You make exceptions for people that you know. You do. You may have hard, fast rules. I always said this about this dude, Ryan Lochte. A couple of years back, Ryan Lochte was an Olympic. Oh, player. I remember the dude who was caught peeing outside in Brazil. Yeah, listen. And everybody was like, spoiled American fucking pee. God. I know everybody I've ever met in my life has peed outside. I have a friend of mine who likes to pee outside more than inside. Yeah, so, dude. But, but and if I had told every single one of those people who was like, "Yeah, this fucking I'm a fucking dude, privileged," if I had been like that, every one of those people, I was like, "Oh, hey, your brother was peeing outside." They'd be like, "Yeah, that's what he does." Oh, Ryan Lochte, yeah, the fucking. So you make excuses, and we look. You look. You see it in politics every day. The reason you're like, yeah, but this, yeah, but dude, dude. That you excuse things from the people you like. You yeah. excuse things from the side you like, yeah. right? And so she, I'm sure, was like, but I'm going to tell you something right now, dude. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Somebody pulls some shit with you or your brothers, I'm going to jail. Or you or your sister, I'm going to jail. I know. I, we've talked about this. But that's, again, that's my thing. Is like, you, have, you had that mindset of, like, you're never leaving Kate's side. Like, where is that mindset with parents? Are they just... Like that, like I, I know obviously there were things that went down and like early on where it's like they had to create, you had to create like the cougar account, right? Because mm -hmm. you were underage, so your parents couldn't steal money from you type shit. But like, Coogan? Coogan, Cougar, Coogan, yeah. Coogan, not Cougar. Yep. That sounds weird. The cougar account is what we're setting up for all those old ladies at the shows who whistle at you. Yeah. <laughs> But it's I'm like, gonna start a uh, cougar account, dude. For yeah, you. no, an OnlyFans cougar account. Cougar, cougar.com. It's like, uh, you know, when it's like there's milfs in your area. Like it's cougar.com. That's what the fucking is name. it? No, I was making it. <laughs> I'm gonna start one. You better. Um, but I, I just like I don't get why every parent doesn't have that fucking mindset. Like maybe it's because they 
want to live vicariously through their kids, so they're just push them to do this, or they just Dude, want them to make all that money so they can supply the family? Like, what so is it? So much pressure. It's so much. You are, there's so many things. One, you don't want to be seen as the person who rocks the boat. Your kid isn't coming back. Um, you, you're the, a lot of times those kids, like I said, are the breadwinners of the family. So you're, I need you to keep working so that I don't have to. Work. And a lot of these people, no, nah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to put that on them. I, I, a lot of these people are also like, they're, they're enamored with Hollywood and being famous and, and like walking a red carpet and all that shit isn't real, man. I'm just telling you somebody. No, and it's also hilarious. It's not real. It's not real, but it's also hilarious that like, the parents are more infatuated with that life than the kids. But then the parents are like, oh, I want to live that life. But they're not actually living that life. That life is for their kid. It's not for your mom behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, that's what I think is hilarious is they're like, oh, I'm going to be the famous one. The fuck you are. Like when your kid grows up enough to not have to have you on set every fucking day, you are going to fade back into being a regular ass person. Yeah. Like that, that's not how life works. Like, Listen, I don't know. I don't get where that delusion fucking comes from. Like it's it, crazy. It's crazy. Well, I'll tell you what was crazy to me is listening to all of them say, yeah, I'm not going to, I would never put my kid in there. I would never put my there, kid in there. That's because they have firsthand experience of what the fuck happened. I, I also, wonder how many childhood stars would offer to put their kids zero. I bet you zero. Uh, Drake did say uh, he, he was the oddly enough the one kid who was like, ah, "Did terrible things happen to me? Yes, but but the good times were so good." That sounds like a wife in an abusive relationship, though. No, you, it sounds like a dude who wanted to be an artist. Who who liked creating? Well, he was also he's also like a liked good musician. Music, it, and the and the joy of that was taken from. Him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, listen, dude. There's, yeah, I I, I I'm. I, it was such a upsetting. Yeah, it was such an upsetting. Um, what was upsetting was the lack of, of I don't know, how to put it but the lack of care from the adults and not just the parents, but the people on set, just yeah, the lack just, of, it feels like a lack of responsibility, lack of accountability, lack of everything. Everybody's just, scared of doing, losing their job, dude. Yeah. Everybody's scared of losing their job. I know. And so it's a bummer. It was just a bummer to see that, that, that there weren't more people sticking up for the kids. Yeah. Now I do have a question on this. And yeah. This is a legit question. Cause you know, Drake also had a, a He's a registered sex offender. Yes. Okay. So my question for that is, do you think his childhood trauma might have contributed to the choices that he made because maybe he feels like he lost out as a teenager I based on what happened? I think there, and I don't know what the percentage is, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think kids who are um, violated as people who are violated as kids are, are I think probably on the l more likely um, scale to, to, to do that when they get it's like, Cause it's a cycle. Cause, I, it, well, I, cause for me, it's like, I don't know what the psychology of it is. And I, and please don't quote me. I, well, don't because I pretend I, like I, this I, is an area of expertise. Yeah, yeah. Not an area of expertise for me as well, but I would think like, you know, they're, for some people, there is a cycle, a cycle that they can break generationally, but you know, like that cycle of abuse becomes the abuser. Is that happens, that does, not happens all the time, doesn't happen with everybody, he, he, but if like a kid is abused by their parent growing up, they sometimes turn into abu the abusive one in the household, whether that's their kid or their significant other. He also never touched anybody, never No, it was sex. just, an, it was an online. It was a DM it, and... Well, it wasn't you, a DM. But if you read his explanation about it, and again, everything can be explained away, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but but I would say this about him. He served his time. I feel this with everybody. You you serve your time. You did what the court asked you to do. Yeah. That's like when, it, when I still, when people still get mad about Mike Vick or whatever. I'm like, dude, you, the guy served his fucking time. Bro, he did like 20,000 hours of community service. Let, let, He's now a pit bull advocate and saves them. But just let people do their time and try to live their lives, yeah. I would say. Okay. Yeah. I I... I you know what? There's I something else I had on top of that. 
I wanted to talk about this, but I don't know if I want to talk about it. this, what we're talking about right now, the quiet on the scent. I just, it makes me so fucking angry. I don't blame you. Um, I can tell you, by the way, I can tell you were punchy prior to me coming in here. I was not punchy. You're not punchy? No, no, no. No, you seem like it. Um, I, I, it makes me so angry, makes me so angry that for people not to look out for those kids. It's just, inf- I was infuriated watching. And listen, dude, easy for me to sit here. Yeah. And uh, easy for all of us to say we would have done the right thing. I like to think I would have done the right thing. Um, but, but, but uh, it's infuriating. Let's try to talk about something else. I, I Okay, I got one for you. Yeah, that fucking... I got one for you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll explain it after I ask the question. What's your craziest B story? Um, I mean, I ran into a sliding glass door. That, by being chased by a bee? The reason I asked is because... I thought I got stung in the neck, but I didn't. It just ran into my neck, and I was freaking out. I was in the backyard mowing the lawn, and I let go of the lawnmower and, and ran straight into the house. What had happened was... What had happened what, was... What had happened was... What had happened was what happened was uh, and, and then I would my oh, dinner was coming and my dad said to me, "Hey, did you mow the lawn? Because I was supposed to do it all day." And I said, "No." And he goes, "You got to mow the lawn before you eat dinner." And I was like, "We're eating dinner right now." And he said, "No, we're eating dinner. Right now. <laughs> You're mowing the lawn." So I could see them uh, through the sliding glass door, all at the dining room table. Eating dinner as I mowed the lawn. That is hilarious. And I'm mowing the lawn, mowing the backyard, and a bee, and I don't even know if it was a bee. In my mind, it was. It could have been a fly. It could have been a mosquito. Could have been nothing. Uh, It was something. Could have been a beetle. I just heard zzz, and it hit my neck. And I fucking punched myself in the neck, like I always do when something flies into me. I over-exaggerate. I fucking gush. I I think I maybe jammed my carotid artery. And I took just dead sprint towards the house. And I remember seeing Jonathan just eating his food, looking at me. And I was running straight for them and just didn't pay attention to the sliding glass door. You didn't wonder why they didn't move out of the way, did you? Who's that? Jonathan behind the sliding glass door. Why would they move out of the way? If you were trying to come in the house and the door was open, they probably would have moved. Well, they were at the table. I would have just, you know. Oh, I thought you said, like, like for me, like, if I was the older brother, I'd have just been standing at the glass door oh, just, no. like, eating. That would have been super funny. They were, my dad would have, wouldn't have let them do that. Oh, no standing and eating? Got to sit at the table? No, but he wouldn't have let them taunt me. Oh. I mean, the only time, yeah, even when he made Jonathan eat food out of the cat dish, he, I didn't tell you that? Jonathan was Ooh. pretending to be a cat one day, and my dad was like, knock that shit off. And, uh, he didn't, he just kept pretending to be a cat. So my dad was like, if he's a cat, make him eat out of the bowl. <laughs> Yo, dude, he let stopped. me guess. He stopped acting like a cat the next day. Yeah, dude. There was no more cat action. Yeah. That, by the way, dude, very effective. Pretty smart. <laughs> very effective. <laughs> well done. Very effective. He didn't Looking. make him eat cat food. Everybody. No, 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 no. But he but, made him eat a human meal out of the cat bowl. Yeah. I don't know how human it was, but it was not great. Gross. But, yeah. You just mean like just because the the Dude. food the food you were eating back then just didn't feel human or was it well, like a can of tuna? I mean, I told you the way my we did not have any money. I told you how our food operated, right? I you did one yes. giant chicken at the beginning of the a week, week and yep. then so you ate as much as you could that first night. Dude, you know when it was fresh. Do you know what you never went had to go through? And by the way, the end of this B story, I sprinted into the sliding glass door and bounced off of it, and then everyone started to laugh. I will like, say, for as many videos as there are on the internet of people running into sliding glass doors, not a lot of them break. Dude, they're pretty hefty. They're built pretty yeah. fucking yeah, strong. They're pretty hefty, yeah. Like, I've always wondered that. I go, I've seen so many people run into a sliding glass door. Yeah. And really fast. No, and you bounce off. But you just, it's like the glass itself shakes. It's like fiberglass or something. Like, they never... Remember when I scared your sister with the scream mask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She ran into the but, sliding but, glass but it's like, you watch it, you watch it, like, shake almost it after you hit earthquake. it. Earthquake. Yeah, but I never understood, like, yo, whoever built those sliding glass doors, like, it's like they make them out of bulletproof glass. Yeah, yeah maybe we should get them to start making bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, those, uh, those motherfuckers are... Str- I, there's not a lot of strong... We have to think strong things just around the household or like household items that are just 
viciously strong for no reason. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sliding glass door being one of them. One of them not being is the swinging open, uh, uh, like the screen door. Those screen doors look like they made out of fucking Dude, yarn. Indiana keeps running through our screen door. My Milo keeps trying to, and he would he'll jump into it and then just so he has to like jump up a little step in order to get into the house. And so sometimes when he goes out to pee, I close the slot the the screen door because it's like if I smoke, I want it to go out, or I don't want that. It's about to be bug season again. I'm not excited. I'm buying bug zappers like I'm in the fucking backwoods in the swamp. I love it. And I'm sticking them outside because those motherfuckers are dying. I'm not playing around. You talking about the locusts? I'm talking about the... Yeah, like where I'm going to put one of those lamps out that has 10,000 volts. Why? I'm going to let those motherfuckers just run into it. Why is Las Vegas the land of the largest moths known to... It's Bro, moth, dude, the, it's the fucking, ones by your old house? Dude, that, that one tree outside the gate? Dude... I swear to God, the moth, I, that's the fucking wingspan. I was like, dude, I thought that was a leaf. I don't know what that is, but these need to go. Dude, why are they here? Fucking Mothra. G Godzilla's coming through afterwards. When And you know me, dude. When those things fly into me, I lose my foot. It's, like it's like somebody threw a small child at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it hits you. It's legit because they're flying. And why are they... Can I just tell you? Can I Why just, are they dusty? Can, Why do they always have shit on them? Well, they're dusty. That's how they fly. If you take the dust off their wings, they don't fly. Wait. Yeah, that, that dust allows them to fly. Matt, is that right? Yeah. Is it actually? I what's think the, so. What's I, the science behind that? I think it's called, uh, it's flying dust. You're stupid. But <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, called, that's called speed. It's called um, flying dust. It's, yeah. it's called drugs, Dude, actually. Can I tell you? Okay. When those moths fly in, it's, wait, wait, okay. <laughs> when bugs fly into me in general, period, I get so mad. I'm like, why are you so fucking stupid? <laughs> you don't see me. I know you got wings, but you don't have fucking eyes. Well, they have like 30 of them. Why are you? Then why can't you see me? Why are you flying <laughs> well, they don't directly know, into my neck? They don't know what direction you are because they're like 360. They see 17 fucking, of you. Fucking flying around. They're meth moths and they fucking gink, gink, gink. But when that moth flies into my neck, dude, I don't know why I come closed fist. I don't know why either. But open I the hit, hand. I hit myself in the face, in the neck. I'll punch myself. Open in the, the arm. hand. But I don't want to slap myself either. I'd rather get slapped than punched. Yeah, I guess I'd rather have a bruise than a handprint. Why? The handprint goes away faster than the bruise. Yeah, but the the bruise, I can think of a good story. A handprint is clearly a slap to the face. Yeah, but a bruise also means, I, in all honesty, would give me same vibes. I feel like it's either a bruise or a hickey on your neck. Which one would you rather have as a 54-year-old man? I'd rather have a bruise. Right. But if, some people might just be like, oh, you got a hickey on your neck? What? If you, you're saying you like a bruise over a hand. But if you punch yourself in the neck... If you leave a bruise, people might think it's a hickey instead. I guess, but I mean, that's a you don't pretty, you a, don't want you don't want to be known as that guy. That's a pretty big mouth hickey, the, the size of my fist. I've seen some pretty unfortunate. You size have? Hickeys. I have never in my life given or received a hickey. There was one time a girl started sucking on my neck, and I said, "Hey, I do not want a hickey." And she said, "Why not?" I was like, "What part of that do you think it feels good?" Well, uh, but it was, <laughs> I was never a hickey guy either. I've I've had a couple given to me, and I've given a couple. But I, I, whenever one was given to me, I always say, "Hey, shoulder." I so when I put a shirt on, no one can see it. Like I'll never. I was like, no neck shit, no bullshit, whatever. Like, nah. But for some, for some girls, I think. Can I be honest? I think it's like a territory thing, where they're like, "I want to, I want to market like this." Well, guys do too, right? Yeah, but I see more girls leaving hickeys than guys. When I see a guy leaving a hickey, they're just a bad kisser. Do you? <laughs> that's what that's what I see. Where it's like you're trying to seduce a girl and give her a neck kiss, but you're just sitting there <laughs> slurping on her neck. Yo, dude, that I, was. <laughs> I can I it. tell you the one sex thing that I just never got? The thing that people are attracted to feet. What the, people well, are attracted? You, you to know feet. why? Because you're a normal human being. The only people who got a feet a foot fetish are the not normal people. I don't know. I dude, I don't know. I don't know about normal, not normal. Well, look, everybody, I'm not kink shaming here, except if you have a feet kink, then I'm shaming you. I, because I can't, I just don't, like, I'm, I'm going to call out Craig Gass right now. Dog, I hope the next time I see you, your puppies are away. Good fucking, did you see that man's toes? Well, he had his nails painted. I don't care. His, all, I didn't look at his feet. I, when someone's wearing sandals and a grown man wears sandals, I immediately go, why? Because no one wants to see the dogs. Bro, 
his pinky toe on his left foot was like here. And the rest of his toes were hanging off the edge of his sandal. And I was like, what is happening here? Like, Craig, I love you, man. I think you're a good guy. But I hope the next time I see you, you got your dogs away. That's I, I, <laughs> that was it was I saw the painted nails, but that was not my first focus. I've never been a foot person. Me either. I've never understood how people like to suck on toes. They stink. I've never understood any of that. It, you know, and, and there's a pretty consistent person on Facebook that reaches out to me and is like, I'm still offering you money for feet pics. And send them my way. I think what I'm going to do is send them pics of somebody else's feet. Send them pics of my feet. You won't only fans your toes. That's dressing them up. If someone were to just DM me and say, hey, send me a picture of your feet for X amount of dollars. Absolutely. Okay. So what you're telling me is we could start an OnlyFans for your feet and you wouldn't mind it. You just don't want to dress up your toes. Yeah, that seems like a lot of work. All I literally have to do is take a picture of my feet. That's it. The dressing them up sounds like a lot of effort. I got to get like makeup remover and like get all of it off. And, you know, we do multiple, multiple things on the feet. But if I am just strictly taking off my sock and sending someone a picture of my foot, 100%, that's easy. Dog, if you go on feetfinder.com, like there's they're all anonymous pictures what? of people's feet. Oh, you don't know about Feetfinder. this? Feetfinder.com. There's a website called feetfinder.com where women and men or whoever will just anonymously post photos of your own feet and people buy them. Dude, I've seen so many dudes doing it for their girlfriends without the girlfriends knowing. And they're making like 10 grand a month. I don't understand why you would rather... Okay. All right. Let's do an OnlyFans for your feet. How okay. about that? Okay. What? Will you Google something for me? I got... Just funny. I actually, the other day, I got a DM on my birthday and it was like, happy birthday. OF? Question mark? And I was like, guys, no. Will, will, you, will you Google something for me? Sure. I guess my theory is that it, there's somebody who thinks... Every part of the body is funny. Will you Google maybe like people who think elbows are sexy? There's got to be an elbow group. If there's a foot group, there's a there's a there's an armpit group where guys like I do know they like, like the fucking armpits. They also like to like lick them and smell them and like what? Oh, dude, they're like I've uh, seen uh, the armpit fuckers. Uh, the armpit fuckers also will like lick. Like they like it when they don't shave. They like the taste. They like the sweat. Like they're those people are fucked up too. That wait, listen, but I bet you that kind of tastes like a battery, like a butthole. You know, yeah. It, it, tell, but there's got to be elbow people, right? Dude, I think and it, October 11th, 2022. Here is an article that was put out. The elbow thing is trending all over TikTok, but no one seems to know what it is. What is that? What What does that mean? I, but uh, I think is, elbow crease, like you could you could jam a dick in between here, like at the form and the bicep. But I don't know, like if people think this part of the elbow, like this the the fleshy skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody, this is fucked up. Somebody goes, how come you hear about foot fetishes, but not so much elbow or back of the head? Back of the head? Back of the head fetish? Back of the head, like your your head. I wonder if that's from a man or a woman. I mean, it's got to be from a dude. Who are we kidding? <laughs> it's a guy. It's of definitely a guy. Of course it's a guy. <laughs> Why can't I can't I fucking... even believe that I contemplated that that might have been a woman. <laughs> of course. I, it's one of us. Of course. I have an course. elbow fetish. Thank you. What does it say? I'm dying to know. What's the thing? They like the inside of the elbow or the bony part of the elbow? Which one it's is? Just the discussion is now closed. Fuck. But dude, open it up. For what? what is the reason that there isn't a subreddit dedicated to elbow fetishes? Well, who is? Confession. I have an elbow fetish. Okay. Let's see if I can. Did it come up? Uh, all uh, right. No worries. Yeah. No worries. So, uh, no, it doesn't really. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Because Probably because th there people is don't. something for everybody, but maybe we found the one part of the body that people were like, nah, I'm not, a, I'm not elbow. I'm not an elbow fucker. I'll fucking underarm. Oh, okay. I got one. This is an article from 2016 that says eight sexual desires you didn't know existed. Oh, let's go. Okay. Number one, cake sitting. Dude. Cake farts. Okay, let me just jump into Cake Farts real quick. If you haven't seen Cake Farts, and I think they took it down, it's the single funniest two-minute video that has ever been on the internet. It is a woman naked sitting on a cake and farting and like watching the frosting and shit. And then the frost, it, it, and there's one shot where 
where the frosting is clearly covering, like where she sat up and, and she had frosting on her butt and on her booty hole. And then it just looked like frosting. And then she farted and you just saw her booty hole go whoop. Hilarious. <laughs> It was like a peekaboo game. Dude, and then the frosting flat, you know, where the, it, it was, dude, Cake Farts is, I'm, to this day, top three, still funniest video of all time on the internet. Don't at me. I am 100% right. Keep going. You're saying that's the funniest video on the internet? Top three of all oh, time. Top three? Drinking out of cups got to be up there for me. What's drinking out of cup? Hey, Mr. Walkway, Mr. Walk me down the walkway, lead me to the building. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you like that guy. Yeah. That. Well, also, the story behind that video is the fucking best. Like, you know the story behind it, right? Nah. Dude. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, look up online a video on YouTube called Drinking Outta Cups. Okay? It is an animated video of a lizard just with a Brooklyn accent just going fucking brazy. Like, just listen to him talk and the crazy shit he does. The visuals are amazing. Yo, that video is based off of two friends in Brooklyn locking their buddy in a closet who is on acid and they take his his audio yeah. and put it to a visual video. So that's all just some dude in Brooklyn tripping balls in his closet. Just talking. Yeah. It is the funniest fucking thing. I love that video. That video yeah. is top tier comedy. Like, okay. whoa. So humor. Cake sitting. Love it. Number two, pony play. Whoa. Pony play is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. One person is. dresses up like a horse and the other and another might lead them around or ride them. Yeah, I've seen HBO Real Sex on that one. And I... Pony play is not something I get. But I always tried to decide what would turn me on more, being the pony or being the person who led him around. I feel like if you're the person who leads him around, you also have a bestiality thing. Because you obviously have a kink for someone who also is acting like a horse. Mm, okay. Like, that's where my, like, yeah. I don't know which one, like, that's just, no, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Yep. Number three, <laughs> Lunars. L O O N E R S. Oh, let me guess. Lunars. Ooh, okay. A lunar is somebody who, okay, ready? You ready for this? A lunar is somebody who likes to dress up like the moon. I knew you were going to guess that. You heard how I spelled it, right? Yeah, Luna. No, well, if you're going to go Luna based on the moon, that would be L-U-N-A. I, I know how to spell Lunar. L-O-O. -O. Yeah, dude. I, 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 These I are people who get turned on by balloons, especially sometimes by popping them. There is something symbolic about their gradual growth and deflation. A Lunar. A fucking Lunar? Crazy. So wait. Do they like the round loons? Do they like the animal loons? Well, so I've seen, like, have you seen those My Strange Addiction things? Yeah. There's a guy who I've literally seen is, quote, married to and in sexual relationships with balloon animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's or a, like, there was or a like woman pool who married toys. a truck. There was that dude who married a car. Yeah. And I was, and he was like, yeah, sometimes we get intimate. I go, where do you stick it? In a muffler? Like, how the fuck do you do that? The, the muffler if they're trying not to get pregnant. It's an anal joke. Yeah. All cool. right. Anywho. I no. thought it was better than you did, but <laughs> Matt liked it. That's what matters. <laughs> okay, this one is crazy. Macrophilia. Macrophilia. Macrophilia and attraction to giants sounds pretty disappointing to have since there aren't many out there to fulfill it. So I would assume that it's kind of short women who like giant men or small dudes who like tall women. So are you like... You're they're masturbating to Jack and the Beanstalk. Fortunately, there are videos using special effects to create the illusions of giant sex, and some are hoping virtual reality could one day make it more real. Dude, what do they call lunars? No, they're not lunars. That's uh, uh, macrophilia. Macrophilia. I thought those are people who like to fuck mac and cheese. It's warm and gooey. No, nah, you missed on that one too. Yeah, uh, clearly. No. But I would tell you, I would rather fuck mac and cheese than a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> The mac and cheese is at least warm and kind of, you know, the balloon. We kick, kick. Yeah, not. I gotta be honest. I'd rather fuck neither. Um, of course, <laughs> neither. Of course, but that's not the fun game. Yeah, but the problem with the mac and cheese, you gotta make sure it's not too hot because you burn your dick going in. Do you but know don't. What I mean? But wouldn't it be funny if right before you had sex, you had to go, <laughs> just blew, and you blew on the spoon. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, look, here's the thing. If I'm fucking mac and cheese, I'm not doing it off a spoon. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm getting the whole tray. Are you, you know what I mean? Like, are you going shells? Are you going the macaroni? I'm going macaroni because I feel like if you get enough of them, that that little curve, they might just curve around your dick. Are you going homemade mac and cheese? So like real cheesy, cheesy? Has to be. Yeah, I agree with you. I know crumbles on top either. No, that sounds like no, yeast I don't infection. Any, I don't want any crumbles. Okay, number five, dendrophilia. They spell it? Uh, dendro. Dendrophilia. D-E-N-D-R-O-P-H-I-L-I-A. Dendro. That's outside. There's well, that. do you know what a dendrologist is? A dendrologist is no. They're the study of trees. So this is this gives tree hugger a whole new name. Well, listen, I, I will say this one I kind of get. At least there's a hole. Not all the time. Well, I mean, they're not fucking trees that don't have holes. Uh, this isn't a tree hugger. It's more like a tree humper. Yeah. In this case, yeah, people with fetishes attracted to trees. I, I the the only danger in that is that squirrels live in those holes. Raccoons, Correct. snakes, yeah, and birds. So if you stick your hui hui. Uh, you know, a squirrel's gonna get those nuts. Dude, if my dick got bit by a squirrel, I don't know if I'd ever recover. If my dick got bit, period, I don't know if I'd recover. That's just uh, end of that sentence. Yeah. I don't, that, that thought always scares me. I don't like that. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. It sounds it terrifying. Yeah, I agree. Okay. No, whoa, this is one I didn't think of. Number six, quicksand fetish. No, I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, seen videos like this. I'm going to be honest with you again, met a woman who starred in these videos and people, it, I've, I've seen some of her videos. It's bizarre. So it says they get sucked into these movie scenes where people are swallowed up by the ground. But is it, what's the fetish? She would star in them. She was a, but what was her what, role in she these films? She was the person getting pulled out of the quicksand. Or but there was, getting, but there was there anything sexual about it, or was it just her being engulfed in, by quicksand? She was in a bikini, flailing, and eventually, you know, you know, her body would shake around as she was trying to get out. But eventually, you know, she was. I don't know. That sounds like some serial killer shit. You like watching somebody get pretty much buried alive? I don't know. That sounds weird to me. Not me, and I, I forget. No, if, not for you. But I'm just saying. I like, forget if they had sex. After they get pulled out of quicksand, I forget. But I do, I had oddly met a woman, that's very specific, who did those exact videos in the woods. In the woods. In the woods, dude. <laughs> I don't know where else you're finding, finding quicksand. Yeah. yeah. No, number seven. Oh, I don't know if I can spell this. All right, spell it. Say it. Auto nepophilia. Nepo? Auto? Ne 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 nepio. N E P I O. A D D O A U T O. Okay. Auto. A auto. Auto nepiophilia. So something about, I don't know, what is it? This is the fetish where people get turned on by acting like babies. This one I never understood the either. Diaper people. Yes. Yeah. So this is what I never understood. Because if you're a dude who likes to watch other kid other grown people dress up like kids, you might be a pedophile. No, that's not what it is. It's but it's the person, it's the person who is dressing up. Yes. But that's my that's my thing. That's not that's not what turns them on, dude. That that is a hundred percent. It's something stuck with them from that age in their no, life. No, no, no. Well, are you talking about the person watching a person get dressed up or the person dressing up like a baby? The person dressing up like a baby. I'm talking about the other side of it. Because if you find a partner, like like right, say you find a partner and you like to dress up like a baby in in those diapers and act like a child. But that turns you on as a grown human adult to have sex with another person. That This is my thing. As the other person in that relationship, are you getting turned on by watching somebody dress like a child? Because if I, you are, you might need help. I think... Does, and does I, that make sense, Matt? Yeah, I, does that, like, does that come across right? Because like I feel like there's something wrong with that. I do think that most of the people, and maybe these are just the videos I've seen and like I said, the real sex and the all those other things that have covered this. I think it's mo mostly I've seen dudes who are wearing the diapers. Tons of women. Really? Tons. The only, most of the videos I see, I see the dude ones also, but most of the ones I see are women who are almost 30. Yeah. I, I, it, but that, honestly, do you know what I mean though? Like it just yeah. seems like, it seems like a really weird like line that if crossed up, other ways is creepy, but for some reason, this line right can here I, is just not a lot. Can I tell you something that we did on a TV show completely off topic, but almost on topic? Okay. 
So we were in the writer's room one day and we were talking about, uh, I don't know how we got on the topic, but like, we all were like, we're going to see if we can pee in diapers. We're going to wear the diaper for a day. Do you know the mental block? Your body probably wouldn't let you. Uh -uh. You know what else we did in that Well, you've been conditioned your whole entire life to not piss and shit yourself. Do you know what else we did in that writer's room? There was a... (laughs) I mean, other than you putting your balls on Brad Wallach's bed? No, this was not that writer's room. Oh. What writer's room was there? There was a... I can't say. Oh, okay. Um, There was a... Where we... There was a woman who worked in the writer's room and she was hilarious. But she was talking about... She was like... uh, I don't know why we were talking about poops, but she was like, I could tell what... If you all showed me a picture of your poops, I could tell you who did them. And we were like, what? She was like, I watch you guys eat every day. And, and so the showrunner was like, I'll tell you what, we have a Polaroid from wardrobe. Everybody who poops today and tomorrow, take the picture. And then we're going to hand them all to this woman. And she's going to put the picture down in front of the person. So it was, wait, wait, wait. How'd she do? Okay. Out of the gate, dude. She drops the first one down. And this is a room of 12 people. Nailed it. And we were all like, no! And then she went like, she, maybe she had two others. Yeah, but just fucking it was shit out of luck, I guess. She, she looked at it and she goes, I know this is you. And just dropped it. And we were all like, get the fuck? What a weird Did she get you right? Lab. No. No. I had she one. couldn't peg a Josh Wolf poop? No, I don't think she pegged me as the dude who went down the hole and out of the water. Flagpole. Yeah, is that what you call That's it? That's what I call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, you know who taught me that? Uh, Jackson. Yeah, to me, it's the Loch Ness Monster. That's funny. You know a what little, I mean? A little Nessie? Because you just see... A little the, Nessie yeah, action? Yeah, That's yeah. funny, actually. All right, and eighth and final weird fetish, mummification fetish. Ooh, Some okay. people will literally wrap each other up like mummies, often as a form of bondage. This one may win the award for the fetish requiring the most effort. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this, this one I would never do, but I get because I understand the bondage stuff. Dog, you pretty much mummify yourself every time you get out of the fucking shower. I put on, so I grab 74 towels. 74 towels, I never understood it. I like my 74 towels. Yeah, but what, you know, why do you need 74 towels? All right, dude. It's kind of weird. Tell everybody what to do. Hey. Thank you guys for watching. We always appreciate it, as always. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. This weekend, by the time you hear this, we will be in Springfield, Missouri. So, the South. Come out and see us. Come have us have some fun with us. It's going to be a great weekend. The week after that, we are in New York. April 13th, one night only Saturday. The Gramercy Theater in New York City. Boy, am I going to be eating some good food for the two days that I'm there. I can't fucking wait. Just so you know, the minute I land, I'm going to find a pizza place. And then, the probably, in all honesty, the minute I wake up on Friday morning, you might actually catch me up early, early. We're going to a deli. I'm getting a sausage, egg, and cheese on a. I, I want everyone on to an know, everything bagel. I want everyone to know that this weekend, when we were together, Jacob and I, I, I had a very mm, real realization. And I, I know if you guys follow, you know that one of the deals with him coming on the road with me is I make him work out with me. I make him eat the way I eat, all this stuff. And I had this realization that he's a grown fucking person, and I he gets to live the life he wants to live. He doesn't have to work out the way I, what makes me happy doesn't necessarily have to make him happy. Right. What, 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 because I prioritize health or whatever, that doesn't mean he has to. And it was, I've always preached, you know, just kind of letting your kids be who they want to be. Even if you think or know what they're doing is not great for them. Mm-hmm. Once they hit a certain age, you talk to your blue in the face. But the truth is they're a grown person uh-huh. and they didn't ask for your advice. So butt the fuck out. I know that's what I would have told my dad. I know that's what I told my mom. You were very patient uh, with me about this stuff. And, and I, I will tell you, man, I just, I want to apologize. I, I didn't mean to try and control your life in any way in a, I, I it all done from a place of what I thought was the best for you. But when I realized that really what's best for you is for you to fall down. And if you're going to pick yourself up, you pick yourself up. Yeah. But, I was, but that's the only way to learn. I will say though, like I'm probably going to stick to the diets on the weekend still. 
The only times I'm going to break that diet is if there is something on a menu that I'm just like, oh, it sounds really fucking good. Or if it's a late night type, type yeah. thing. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's late night and there's nothing, like when we were in Cincy this weekend and the only thing fucking right next to us was, I'm not even going to name the place because their, food, their sushi was so bad. Yeah. But like I was looking for something specifically to where I didn't fuck up that diet because cheat meals, I love the cheat meals. The cheat meals fucking drive us yeah. on the weekend. Like that's what we love. But also the diet for me, it's hard to say that it's an actual diet when I get to eat steak and mashed potatoes every night for dinner. Right. Do you know what I mean? But it's, even things like working out or the comedy notebook or anything. Yeah, but I like the comedy notebook. I know, dude, but I can't, I can't, I can't make your path what my path was. Yeah, and I know, but that's also like this whole thing was coming out of love because you want, you see so much of me and you that you want to try and jump the gun on mistakes that you made. I want you to know that I appreciate that and I can't wait to eat whatever I want to on the road and have a soda in the green room once a night. It's going to be legit. Yeah. But I will say there are some things you've instilled in me already that you tried to that you're, you know, you obviously like, I don't have to work out with you or do all that. But like those three things that those main things you've instilled in me on the weekends are still what I'm going to do on the weekends. Okay. And that's a comedy journal. And that's, it may not be every set, but it'll be on the sets that I either don't like the most or like the most, I think is what I'm going to do. Like if a set really speaks to me in either one way or another is when I'll write it down and talk about it. And I'm still going to stick to the diet because like, it's not that hard for me to not eat like shit on the weekends. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I ate like shit last night because Iman looked at me and she goes, Hey, I want to get high and watch TV. I was like, sign me up. Like, so we just sat there and like, there are just some nights that her and I just like to get faded Mm -hmm. and just eat a whole bunch of shit. Um, but on the weekends, dude, I had two bowls of ice cream last night. Dog, I had two bowls of ramen, half a bag of the Hostess powdered donuts that we her and I split. Okay, oh, I ate a ramen packet. I ate a tteokbokki packet, which is so so tteokbokki is like, like a Korean rice cake essentially, yeah. and it's like it looks like penne pasta, but they're gummy. They're like gummy rice cakes, and so it's from the same company that I love my ramen. And so I heated it up, and then I just so much mozzarella cheese on top of it, like with the rice cakes. I started putting cheese in my ramen now. Thanks, okay. Korea. Thanks, Korea. Um, by the way, if you haven't tried it, don't knock it till you try it. The cheese on the ramen, I thought was crazy. It's life changing. Like, like life changing. It's so fucking good. Oh my god. But yeah, we just like. But I feel like on the weekends, it's not that. Like, that's not a problem for me to still be eating well. And yeah. also, I don't know. I feel like part of the reason I don't really eat well here by myself is because eating well is fucking expensive. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. I would agree with that. But like, yeah. like, even if I'm going to shop at Whole Foods, just if I'm just getting regular shit from there, like what I would from Trader Joe's and just switching it, it's different. Like, yeah. like it's more expensive, It's but, but it's better quality stuff. Like, he, 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 dude, uh, dude, but eating healthy for you at this point, starting, the habit is just not eating the shit. It doesn't have to be the grass-fed or organic. Yeah, it's I'm just, not really eating fat. The, right. the only fast food I'm really eating is like Rubio's Tacos. Anyways, but it's like, well, yeah, but, I, 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 my point being, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm none of my fucking business. None of my business. How you go about your work with the comedy, with your stand up. Yeah. The only thing that's my business as far as what you're doing is this podcast. Mm. And that will be the only thing that I comment on. I told you before, if you want advice on diet, working out, stand up, yep. you know, I'm here, Yep. but I'm going to mind my own fucking business. And just enjoy my time with you. Yeah. That's is, what, is yeah, really in, what I want to do. I'm in for that. Um, okay. And guys, uh, let me do the closeout again because we were in the middle of that. And then we oh, okay. else. Uh, I said April 13th, the Grand Receipt Comedian, Joshua.com for tour dates and tickets. Guys, April's going to be fun. May's going to be great. Two weeks in June. And, you know, we're going to keep going from there. But come see us. Come have some fun. Uh, Joshua Comedy on all platforms. Um, ComedianJoshWolfCut.com for tour dates, tickets, links, all shit like that. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Yes. And we have, starting next week, um, the interview podcast coming out. I, I think on Monday of next week, we'll drop uh, the interview we did with Bunny. Okay, great. So stay on the lookout for that. Um, and as always, thank you guys for being here. None of this would be possible without y'all. And hey, do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. We'll see y'all next week. Later, everybody.